Ship combat is a really popular path for pilots in Star Citizen, and the idea behind the Mustang Delta is to provide a decent platform for such players at an affordable price. But is it actually any good? I'm Farrister, and in this video we'll explore the answer to that question by reviewing the currently flyable Consolidated Outland Mustang Delta, which is described as a light fighter. If you've seen other reviews on this channel then you probably know what to expect, with this video following the usual format. It's split into five sections, starting with a ship tour, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating costs before finally summarising. As always, I've included timestamps in the video description in case you want to skip ahead. And if you're one of the many people watching who isn't yet subscribed to the channel, you might consider it so you can be notified of future Star Citizen videos as they go live. I always start my ship reviews with a ship tour, and the Mustang Delta as a small fighter, it's going to be a quick one. We enter into the canopy by the left or port side, which opens up the cockpit glass, deploys a ladder and allows you to climb inside. Then you're in the cockpit, and that's just about it. The Mustang Delta comes armed with two size 2 M4A laser cannons on a turret on the nose, and two size 2 Badger repeaters on fixed hardpoints underslung beneath the wings. In addition, whilst there are no missiles aboard, there are also two rocket pods underslung beneath the wings, which show up in-game as Jericho XL, offering similar DPS to the Badgers and the Delta is defended by two size 1 shield generators, which is pretty much par for the course for smaller fighters. Put that together and you get a fair combat platform. It's not as heavily armed as an Arrow or Gladius, but still packs enough firepower to deal with smaller targets and threats, especially in a PvE environment. The Delta is quick enough to be able to manoeuvre on target and deliver some of that firepower. It's worth adding that the rocket pods do have limited ammunition, so you might end up treating them as fixed ballistic weapons or similar. Oh, and don't be surprised if they're a little bugged in that they don't show up as firing even whilst using your ammunition. Visibility in the Mustang Delta is absolutely fantastic. The canopy has no obstructions at all, save the dashboard at the front, meaning you get uninterrupted views above and to the sides, and to some extent below your feet on either side. And the dashboard also looks great, with an expansive display that looks a bit like what you might find in the glass cockpit of an F-35 fighter, although sometimes it can catch the reflections of the sun if you're at just the wrong angle. The handling of the Delta as a light fighter is fairly good too. It feels responsive and nippy, and with application of the afterburner can change direction quite quickly too. Sometimes during atmospheric flight the nose can get a little squirrely, that might be the impact of some sort of wind mechanic, but generally speaking it's easy to fly. And the SCM recommended speed of 184 meters per second feels about right while still being quick. With a top speed of 1227 meters per second, the Delta falls slightly short of the Arrow and Gladius, but is still highly competitive when set against larger ships, which potentially gives the Delta the opportunity to use speed to disengage from an unfavourable fight. The stock quantum drive is the Rush, which isn't bad but isn't great either, but with the limited quantum fuel stores available on the Mustang Delta, it's probably not worth swapping out as the stock drive can just about make it between key planetary bodies in Stanton. As you might expect from a starter ship, the Mustang Delta is incredibly cheap to rearm, refuel and repair. Most times you'll probably spend less than 100 Alpha UEC doing so. In terms of making money with the Delta, that's where things are a little more challenging. With no physicalised storage, that rules out cargo trading or box delivery missions, largely this is a ship confined to running combat contracts to make ends meet. But as a fighter on the lighter end, if you're not in the 1% of ace pilots, you're probably also limited towards fairly low end combat contracts too, low to medium threat missions seem to be the sweet spot. 
That's enough to start building up funds for somebody going from zero to hero, but it may take some hours to get enough funds for a new ship purchase. In terms of loadout, I actually wouldn't change much about the Delta as the stock loadout seems to work just fine. The Mustang Delta isn't supposed to be flashy, and it's not supposed to be the most powerful. It's a modest starter ship that happens to lean towards the combat gameplay style. It's small and easy to fly, and has some utility with the headlamps up front that light up very well. The rockets are weapons and not missiles, meaning they can be fired without changing firing mode. And the reclaim timer is incredibly fast, in case things went wrong. But it's not all sunshine and roses. The lack of any physical storage is a shame, especially for a starter ship. There's plenty of unused space behind the pilot's chair that could be better utilised. The rockets are unchangeable hardpoints, and given that they're slung just beneath the wing, it seems a real shame that they can't be used to swap for weapons or a missile on a rail. And whilst the Delta can deal with smaller threats, it's not as powerful as the other light fighters, meaning it's always going to be a stepping stone. But perhaps, for a starter ship, that's okay. Coming in with a price of around $65 depending on package, or 750,000 Alpha UEC in-game, the Delta is one of the cheaper options in Star Citizen. But it may also not be worth it, in that the in-game price is only 200,000 Alpha UEC short of the price of an Arrow, which is generally a stronger option, and that there are more versatile, combat-focused starter ships for real cash if you're that way inclined, like the Aurora Legionnaire or Mark, both of which are slightly undergunned compared to the Delta, but are more competing in the same combat arena, and moreover, offer more utility like an internal storage area and a bed. That said, the Delta is still not a bad choice for somebody who knows they're interested in the combat side of Star Citizen, but it's likely to always be a stepping stone to something greater. And as always, that relates to how the ship currently performs in-game, it's always possible that future patches change things up somewhat. It feels rather bold to say that this isn't a ship that pilots would stay with for life, so I'll be really interested to read whether you agree or not in the comments section. Once again, if you're not yet subscribed, you really might consider it if you got this far, as I have a few more Star Citizen ship reviews you can expect over the coming months. And it would also be really helpful if you press that like, or dislike button to guide me as to what videos you're enjoying the most, so I can tailor them to you. Otherwise, and as always, thank you for watching.